when you quit, your mind does this. Once you say, I'm not going to quit, this is the 40%. When you quit, your mind says, we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, uh-uh, this sucks, I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow, we gotta figure this thing out. So then these compartments in your brain start to work. They have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before, but you can't engage it by sitting back in these nice chairs, drinking this nice water, talking to you, talking about what I want to do. So that's where the 40% thing comes in. It comes in when you're in suffer mode and you say, I'm not going to quit. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to, but then it becomes used to it. In times of need, even the hardest person forgets how badass they are. So I've been through a lot of my life. When you're going through a hard time right now, you forget all the hard time you endured. So the cookie jar is a reminder that, oh, I can get through this hard time right now, but you gotta take a second or two to reach into the mental cookie jar. You gotta open up and say, okay, man, I was in three hell weeks and I got through two of them. You know, I was in ranger school. I saw these beatings. My mom's soon to be husband got, got murdered. I saw a little kid head get ran over. All these things I endured alone. I have to remind myself of the strength and the power that I have that is in me. It's just a reminder of how badass you are in hard times because, you know, we just forget that bad time consumes our mind and we forget who we are. I visualize a lot, always have. Yep. Always have, but a lot of it was very disgusting. It was like, woe is me. But I developed a reality that wasn't real. That's the thing we always do. We can have a great life, but we always build this reality around the one thing we don't have. So therefore, our great life, we don't even see it. We see the one piece of clothing we weren't able to get versus the amazing things we have. So we focus on that. I was the king of focusing on the one bad thing in my life. Everything bad, I focused on that. But over here was a beautiful reality of my life. Even though I came from nothing, where I could have taken my mind for the possibilities of where I can go if I work harder, that was all over here. But I lived in the filth over here. And we all have this list in our head, this magical list of all this shit that we don't want to even do because it scares the crap out of us or it makes us feel like we're not good enough. We all have the list. So I had a humongous list of insecurities and crap. You know, my dad beating the hell out of me and having learned disability, stuttering, I was in the $7 a month place for a long time. I had all kind of crap going through. I had all kind of just demons that just made me just afraid of everything. And I designed this program myself when I realized I had this voice, we all had this voice in our head. There's always this voice in our head telling us different things. And the voice in my head, it kept on calling me like, you know, you're scared of all this show over here. You're scared of this big laundry list of stuff, man, because your dad beat you and this happened and this happened. All these things that happened in my life, I wasn't facing them. Even though I didn't cause a lot of them, they're mine to own now. And the one thing that I really realized was for me to become a tough guy, and that's what I wanted to be, I saw myself as a very weak man. And for me to be hard and be tough, I had to start going over to that list, that scary list, to start facing that. Because I knew over there, I was going to find a whole new person. Because if I kept on doing the things that made me feel comfortable, I was going to continue being that same person I always was, the lying, insecure, fearful person living in this nice, comfortable life of mine. So I just designed a very uncomfortable world for David Goggins. And in that world, that's where I created Goggins. So there's David Goggins and there's Goggins. I created Goggins in that meat eater world over there of mine. So basically you have to put yourself in the moment a million times while I'm sitting here. First of all, it takes total quietness we live in a world that's so busy and so active and moving so fast. Right now, I am sitting with Tom Ferry. 
my mind is sitting with Tom Ferry. It's not talking to Tom Ferry while thinking about, my God, I gotta order some more books, I'm sold out of here, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. That's the first thing about visualization. You must make sure to silence out all the bullshit of life, which is very hard to do. Because your visual picture has to be clear. It can't be like kind of in and out, like a fuzzy TV. You gotta see it. It has to become real. You gotta take a snapshot of it a million times, put in the bank. That snapshot of me was getting that 4,021 pull-up knocked out because the record was 4,020. I visualized that over and over and over again. So I visualized yeah. success. But then I went through, that's the fun part. I have to do 4,020 pull-ups to get to that 4,021 pull-up. Yeah. When I get to 2,500 pull-ups, my hands start to rip. Okay, I get ready for that. So I started visualizing, how am I gonna handle the pain? Okay, then you start visualizing, okay, my nutrition was off. You start visualizing all these things because yeah. You have to mimic it a million times, but I can't mimic 4,020 pull-ups no. by doing it. That was my big thing. I had to walk in, get the chalk. I had to see everything over and over and over again. And when I realized I had to keep that visual, that picture in my head for 17 hours. It took me 17 hours to break that record. So for 17 hours, while I used to be loud everywhere I went, I put these headphones in and I never listened to music. I listened to one song going the distance for 17 hours. It's two minutes and 13 seconds. For 17 hours, I had that in, and I just went here. And so I was able to visualize every rep. So I visualized my hand placement, making sure that felt right before I got going. I didn't ignore all the little pains. My hands got sweaty. Okay, that means I was aware of everything. That means, my, okay, my hand's about to rip. It's getting sweaty. Wipe it off. Be aware of everything. I was totally in the moment because of how I visualized everything. I believe in God big time. I've had this voice in my head since I was a young kid, so what trained me was that voice. This voice in my head guided me to the spot where I'm at today. And if you don't believe that you're here for a reason, your life will seriously hurt. And I started looking at my life and all that I went through as God put me here to go through this. And now I see all the hundreds of thousands of lives I'm changing by the hell I went through. There's a lot of power in that. So my purpose, as I started going through this journey, instead of looking at like, woe is me, God, man, why, why? I started looking at this, it's the perfect training ground. You knew exactly what you were doing. You put me in every situation possible to tell a story that needed to be told. People don't understand, this wasn't like a, part-time job man when you've done without like Kobe Bryant when Kobe retired at last game he had like 60 points walked off the court he didn't cry he said oh my god I'm gonna miss the sport he walked off he gave he gave everything he could man when you give what I've given I've given everything people make all oh, you you ran off up knees you taped your feet up you did blah blah you had two heart surgeries you kept on going which makes me who I am we all look for toughness we all want it, but we look for it in a comfortable environment. You will not find toughness in a comfortable environment. Yep, sure did. I had somewhere to go. I got there. And buddy, when mother tell you, you can take a break now? Yeah, you're fucked up. As long as my knees are halfway working, I got to run. You're telling me, man, maybe, maybe a chance I can't run no more? Hmm. Give me an excuse and not do it. But as long as I have no excuse, I got to do it. I was happy where I was. I gave everything. I gave everything to who I am. And that's why I'm, people are, oh, I don't believe that. Don't, don't believe it. I gave everything. You have no regret. People didn't understand me. People don't understand me now. I don't give a fuck. I know exactly what I was doing. I'm not a masochist. I'm not crazy. I'm not this and that. People try to title me and label me. No. I had something can do. Is like our minds are like a garage. And the garage, you, if you open a garage and it's all cluttered up, you can't put your car in there. You got boats and you got kids' toys and shit everywhere. But if you organize that garage and you put everything in its rightful spot, you can pull that car in there. You can put two cars in there. You can put bikes in there. And that's like with the mind. 
People talk about discipline, determination, repetitions, and all this shit. Consistency. So we, we live in a world that we want to be as comfortable as we can. And we wonder why we have no growth. We, we wonder why when the smallest thing in our life gets difficult, we wonder why we cower and we run away. Because our whole life is a set, set up in, in the path of least resistance. There's no room in that mind for discipline. There's no room for consistency. They may do it once or twice, but then the mind takes over and that garage comes in. And then it's like a circuit breaker, man. A circuit breaker just overloads and barks. And our minds, that's, that's our mind, man. It's like a circuit breaker that has so much shit in it, you keep on loading it, you can't put any more into it. I talk about it in there, man, so much about clearing space in your mind so that you have room for all those disciplines. Waking up early, taking those, they do mean something. But we don't get to that dark matter that is keeping you from clearing out that mental garage. People with a talent problem who are so talented, they're hard to train. They're hard to push. If you're their coach and you're trying to get them to see that we got to get you past this talent problem, we got to get you to the point where you're into that mental zone. Cause we gotta get you way past your talent. And it's, it's hard for coaches to take these fighters or whoever past their talent. And on the other side of that is where they gain true, true levels. The levels beyond talent, that's where it really is. Cause if you're able to take a motherfucker down to the deep end, while well, motherfucker's just putting his toe in, feeling the water and shit. If a motherfucker in the deep end, he's able to take you down there and he's mentally strong, it's over. It's over, man. They, because they because they live in the deep end. They live in it, man. They thrive in it. When you quit, your mind does this. When you quit, your mind says, we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, F you, uh-uh, this sucks. I'm drowning, I'm miserable, I'm suffering, I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, he's not leaving. So we gotta expand, we gotta grow. We gotta figure this thing out. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. You're forcing your brain now to operate on a level it's not used to, but then it becomes used to. When there's no more talent, what happens to you? Most people quit. Man, why am I always messing up right here? It's because you're performing to your talent. And then after that, your mind has nothing for you. I, I said to myself, who on this earth would still be going like that? You are. You gotta be the hardest mother on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a f At that time, it got me to the finish line of that race. I believed it. I believe it today. I put my phone away, I put it away, and I go dark. I go dark a lot, and it's because I have to find out. I'm on a journey of life, and we all have a different journey. And I want to be in my divine box. And I believe your spirit is forever. It has to. It's too powerful. No way in hell that thing just dies when you die. I want to be able to look back on my life when I'm all dead and be so fucking proud of myself forever. This is all temporary to me. I want to be forever proud of who I was as a man and change who I used to be. The liar, the insecure guy. I want to be proud. When I, if I die now, I want to look at myself and say, proud of myself. It's okay to be unhappy sometimes, man. It's okay to say, you know what, man, I'm, I'm f***ed up. So you gotta go to the truth first. Who are you? Get really accountable and say, okay, who am I? What's the truth about me? Get to that dark place in your mind. Figure out, it may take months, it may take years. Figure out your purpose. Figure out what you wanna be in life. The thing is I'm trying to find more of myself. And the only way I can find more is to silence the world out as much as I can because it's, it's, it's getting busier every day. It's getting faster. And the faster it gets, the more you are missing who the fuck you are. You have to go dark. You have to be quiet in your mind. Get away from people. We love being around people. We love talking. We love, we love parties. We love all that. It's okay to be alone. It's also okay to be unhappy. It's okay to be unhappy sometimes, man. It's okay to say, you know what, man? I'm, I'm up. So you gotta go to the truth first. Who are you? 
get, get really accountable and say, okay, who am I? What's the truth about me? But you have to go into those dark chambers that we often shut off and you gotta open them up. You gotta open up and fight that fucking demon. Get in there, talk to that mother say, what's up? Get to that dark place in your mind. Figure out, it may take months, it may take years. Figure out your purpose. Figure out what you wanna be in life. And then from there, okay, I have my purpose. It's easier to accept the fact that I'm just not good enough. I wasn't made to do that. And yeah, some of us can't be LeBron fucking James. But I'll tell you right now, man, we can do a lot when it comes to this pure arm guts and willpower and getting through We have a lot more with a lot more than we think we have. We like that person who says, hey, you know what, man, I don't feel good today, man. And they say, oh, it's okay, brother. Take a day off, man, we get a pizza and watch the game. We like that. Boy, my whole life. That's why my friends hate my ass, boy. Because I'm hard on me. If I'm hard on me, I don't give a f about you. This morning I woke up with a slack jaw, poopy pants mentality. I've been traveling an awful lot. Kind of wore down a little bit. I believe in taking days off. I think days off are real important for recovery and all that stuff. But I don't believe in taking days off because your mentality is just feeling sorry for yourself. Uh, I deserve this or I've earned that mentality. And that's what I was saying to myself. Today's self-talk was horrible. So we have, I mean, you know, we all have one voice. And that one voice is very powerful that says, hey, you've earned this, you deserve this. Take time off, all that stuff. In life, a lot of us believe that we're working much harder than we actually are. We think if we've got up early for four days, we've earned something. You gotta drop your entitled mindset. We believe you work harder than we actually have. Trust me, most of us have it. Learn to help yourself. Don't count on other people to help you. Start developing the other voice, the other voice that fights that voice when it's not a designated day off. I don't care if it's running, swimming, biking, studying. If it's not a day off, don't take a day off and start developing that voice that fights the weaker voice. So. Remember that, we all have one voice, work on the other voice also. If you're not putting in the work, you have to do more. You gotta stop telling yourself that you're doing enough. In life, it's never enough until you feel this overwhelming feeling of man. I'm out working the crowd. I'm out working everybody. I'm doing more. It's not until then, once you get there, that's when you fucking know you've done enough. Success isn't a straight line. It's a maze. And when you think you figure that maze out, you hit a wall. And you gotta turn the f around and start again. Stay hard. I just got a 17 hour flight. And I'm sitting there thinking, take a day off. No one will know. But I keep on thinking too. There's always someone out there who's working harder than you. Know that that someone out there is willing to forgo personal desires and comforts, forgo sleep, forgo whatever it takes to be better, to be the best. In life, a lot of times, a lot of us have that person out there. There may not be a name or a face to him, but he exists. You make sure in life when you think about that person, you make sure they put a name and a face to it. You, you make sure the name and face is yours. You do the haunting. Get in somebody's head. Own space. In those times when you want to quit, because we're all human, you make sure you remember one thing. All those times and hours and days you sacrifice to be the best. Stay hard. When you're trying to get better in life, the grind's forever. There is no end. As long as you're breathing, you gotta keep trying to get better. The refrigerator's never full. You've never arrived in life. What have you done today? No one cares what you did yesterday. You gotta change the dialogue. The yeah, I used to be mentality doesn't work. What have you done today to better yourself? Lifting weights, people like people don't get it, man. It's not like lifting weights. It's like, you know, we go and do like so many reps, like People go, oh, you're only doing, um, it was like 90 some pounds on the incline. Do five sets of 25 with a super set. 
of push-ups, superset of curls, superset of pull-ups, superset of triceps. We're going through lifting lightweight, but for massive, massive amounts of reps. And so you're like totally swollen. If you like bench pressing and you bench press all the time, what are you finding out? If you like to swim, that's all you want to do is swim. What are you finding out? People talk about triple down on your strengths. That's the fucking weak in the world. No, triple down on your weaknesses. Find out something about yourself. I want to tell you how you can help yourself get through the times that suck. Real life. This is real life. 90% of your life will suck. 10% will be happy. Is I have the ability to see the end before the beginning even begins. And what that means is I know that to get to the very end, I can see it right now. I saw myself walking across the stage at 191 fucking pounds. That's what I had to get to, to, to get into the door. I saw myself six months, a year later, whatever it's gonna take me to do it. I saw myself walking across that stage, getting that fucking certificate of graduation from Buds. And I was able to be there at 300 pounds. And that feeling that I was nowhere near that feeling, I was able to put myself there a million times every day. And that feeling of like, my God, that is gonna feel fucking amazing. That's what made me suffer. That's what allowed the pain to be real and say, this is worth it. I want to feel for this next 18 months. It took me 18 months to finally become a Navy student, to finally you know, just get through butts. 18 months, in six months, it took me 18. If you don't see results in the first two days or the first week, I'm done. That's the mentality of most people. The struggle is too real. We're not patient. We like in a world where you can Google the best restaurants around me right now, no one is patient. And for you to lose weight, for you to stop drinking, if you where the hell you're going through, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of time, and a lot of pitfalls, a lot of plateaus. It's not gonna happen fast. We are all being tested in life. While my test is different than yours, you will be tested. And how you face that test and how you overcome that test determines the rest of your life. The one mentality that you must have in life is that regardless of what's in front of you, you still must grind. I'll never be in the Olympics. I'll never be a professional athlete, but still I grind. I fail at most things I do, but still I grind. I don't want to do half that I do, but still I grind. And that one day, you see me down a dark alley, run at one o'clock in the morning, no one thing. I was grinding. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you want to go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you got to break yourself off. The amount of mental pain, of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do. Tripling down on your strengths and don't worry about your weaknesses. If anybody out there knows who I am, I totally disagree with all of that crap. I think it's crap and that's exactly how the people in the world become weaker people. It's by capping your brain, it's by putting this kind of garbage in it about not attacking what you're not good at. It's about putting a cap on managing your expectations. If I lived that way, if I had any kind of thought process like managing expectations, I would be a 400 pound man by now, working some job that made no money, and I would not, never know my capabilities. I would never have become a Navy SEAL. I never went to Ranger School. We all want to read about how we can quickly get somewhere. That's why the six minute abs and all are so powerful. You may get some results from it, but they're not permanent. The permanent result comes from you. You have to suffer. I always fix the things on the surface. If I couldn't read and write, I learned to read and write. I would always fix these things on the surface level. And so whenever something hard would like raise his ugly head, I didn't have any kind of tools to handle it. I'm like, man, I thought I fixed this already, man. But no, I didn't go deep into the dungeon of my soul to say, okay, what is making you a quitter? What is making you a weak man? What is making you afraid? That's why I kept on quitting and going back to start or not knowing how to get through hard times. And that's why I always tell people, I'm not a theorist. 
I didn't study, like, you know, I didn't study a book. I literally put myself in a fire repeatedly like a sword. You put a sword in a fire repeatedly and repeatedly. If, if you keep on doing that, you're going to get a nice sword. And then you keep on beating it. You got to beat the shit out of it. <laughs> and that's what I am. Yeah. I, I became that. Mu- I, I, I said, okay, we, we, we can't quit. We got to figure out what's wrong with you. What's going on here? So I kept on putting the sword back in the daggone fire and I just beat it harder. And I beat it harder. Before I knew it, I started realizing, hmm, all right, man. The brain is starting to get hard. The brain is starting to get hard. The one mentality that you must have in life is that regardless of what's in front of you, you still must grind. I'll never be in the Olympics. I'll never be a professional athlete, but still I grind. I fail at most things I do, but still I grind. I don't want to do what I do, but still I grind. And that one day, you see me down a dark alley, run at one o'clock in the morning, no one thing. I was grinding. Stay hard. And I know how to self-motivate. A lot of them don't know how to self-motivate, man. Like, we like to put the headphones on, like before the big game and listen to the music. What did you do when the headphones come off, bro? It's you in your own mind. I know how to do that. That's that's the hard part, man. Do you man. ever listen to music when you run? Never. I'm afraid of this. I'm up here. Life made me this way here. I stutter. I, I have these issues with, with uh, reading and writing. And I'm, I'm fat and I'm insecure. We can't live like this. We can't live in fear. We can't live in judgment. We can't be afraid of what people right now are looking at me saying about me. We cannot be afraid of that. My reading, my learning, my, my workouts, my, my, my diet. And you start neglecting all of that. You neglect one of them. You can, you can neglect all of them a long time. It's going to haunt you. When you start seeing that, my God, I haven't eaten right in a long time. I haven't been sleeping right in a long time. It can only be one of those things to take you off. I'm very aware of my eating, my sleeping, my disciplines of life. And when I started to get too far away from them, it's a hard stop. And the one thing, the only thing that gets me mad nowadays is that so many people die with untapped potential because they think that someone else is better than them. And they were born not with the greatest tools. You need the ability to grind your ass into a fine powder. And when you're in that fine powder, find a way to build that back up repeatedly. And it's possible. When you come from a small, small town, and you come from a place that a lot of people don't want to come out of it and get out of it, and all you want to do is become somebody, you've got to be able to get out and let your mind see open-mindedness. Because a small town, what it does to you is it closes your mind, completely closes your mind. Not everybody. This isn't everybody, a lot of people. You have to be able to go out there and create open-mindedness. You need space. You need space to see the world. Like a lot of racism, a lot of a lot of ignorance in the world, it comes from people not being out and seeing other things, seeing other people. That's why we judge so harshly, because our minds are so closed to the reality of of life, period. Self-esteem was built at a young age. I had zero. So that's why that discipline for me was important. It takes nothing to be a loser. And that's why I hold most people to a higher standard because I know how little it takes, little, like little ability. Like you need no talent, you need no greatness inside of you, and you can still be a bad mother. You have to be open-minded to the possibilities that I can do this. Once you shut your mind down to the possibility that it can be achieved, there's no way it can happen. So that's why my, my eyes and my body light up about things. Because I know that if you're in a fight, you have to attack. You have to keep attacking. The enemy has to know he is not going to give up. You must break the soul of whatever the fuck is in front of you. That's what I realized. I was never breaking the soul of anything in front of me. I started to devise ways to break a soul of a human being, of, a, of an object, of, of, of whatever's in front of me. If you keep on attacking something, nothing wants to stand in front of anything that is relentless. Nothing. I'm the hardest working guy that, that doesn't talk about it. So basically, I don't take any days off as far as working out. First thing in the morning time is you have to build your confidence. And every day you're constantly gaining and losing confidence. You're never staying the same. 
So how you build your confidence is, if you like what you see in that mirror, that's how you start your day off. If you wake up and you, and you look fat, you look out of shape, you're not feel good, which is, you know, or you don't feel good inside. So my whole big thing is get up and work out. Shed some calories. Get the adrenals going. Get the mind going. Get all that going. Every day I run. Every day I work out. A lot of people, what they do is they have these, these finish lines. And I have a saying that says, I don't stop when I'm tired. I stop when I'm done. When I was uh, younger, I didn't have any goals. It's not really so much about goals. It's just a to-do list. A to-do list. And as a human being, if you don't have a to-do list, you're going to sit back and just fade away. So I've been grinding lately. Every day. Running over 20 miles a day. Getting up early. Going to bed early. Eating the right shit. Because last week, it started taking a toll on me. I usually don't think too much. Get my shoes on, head out. I've been thinking a lot. That internal voice that's been talking to me. Talking about, oh man, you're tired. Looking at my shoes about pushing back the time that, that I go out to go run. So I decided to tape record myself. That internal voice I put on tape. So if you ever have a hard time out there, tape yourself. Listen to what kind of bitch you're being. Stay hard. I'm no longer a theorist. I'm now a practitioner. I put it in hell. I dissect it while it's in hell because you can't dissect anything in a normal environment. You can't dissect anything in 72 degree weather. You must put it in the fucking freezer and freeze and then you dissect it. Dissect it when it's miserable. Dissect the brain when all it's thinking about is I need to get out of here, man. I want to get out of the freezer. Open the door. And he said, nah, five more seconds, man. Five more seconds in the freezer. And that's when you start to pick that brain apart. And that's what all this stuff did to me. I kept on putting myself back into the freezer or the fire and beating out of myself, mentally and physically. Before I knew it, this is what happened. I am a, even though people may not believe it, because I cuss, which is hilarious, I believe in God big time. I've had this voice in my head since I was a young kid, so what trained me was that voice. This voice in my head guided me to the spot where I'm at today. And if you don't believe that you're here for a reason, your life will seriously hurt. And I start looking at my life as God put me, some God, wherever you believe in, put me here to go through this. And now I see all the hundreds of thousands of lives I'm changing by the hell I went through. There's a lot of power in that. So my purpose, as I started going through this journey, instead of looking at like, woe is me, God, man, why, why, man, why? why? I started looking at it's the perfect training ground. You knew exactly what you were doing. You put me in every situation possible to tell a story that needed to be told. People don't really understand what that is. When you're in the worst environment possible, the worst situation possible, and everybody's looking like, God, man, I hope this ends. And you see that. Time slows down and you see that. You're, you're feeling that. Everybody has that look on their face like, God, this got to go. I don't want to be here anymore. And when I started realizing, I started playing mind games. And I was like, you know what? I bet these fuckers are looking at us, judging themselves about when they were going through Hell Week. About, let me see, I'm looking at Goggins right now. I was better than him. And I was like, okay, okay. You're going to judge me, right? <laughs> All right. So this is what I'm going to do to you. They tell you how you're supposed to feel. You are feeling that way. I was like, uh, don't let these motherfuckers tell you how you're supposed to feel. No, it's day one, motherfucker. This is our one. So I was getting my Boku all jacked up. I said, we're going to take these motherfuckers' souls. So when they had us doing this simple thing that guys were struggling with, I looked on the instructor's faces and it looked like someone had just f***ed with their soul. And I looked at my guys in my Boku and I said, hey, guess what? We own <laughs> space in their head. We own space. They're going to think about us tonight. We start fueling off the fact that, man, it takes one second of energy to steal everybody's. And then you have all the energy you need. That's all you need. You need to look at someone's eyes. You know how it is when you fight somebody and you broke that. He's like, oh God, man, I don't want to go back to the next round. And you feel like, my God, I can fight all day. I can fight all mm. day long. That's what taking souls is. But you have to have the will, the heart, the courage to go that distance when you're exactly jacked up. You have nothing left to give and give more.
In life, a lot of us believe that we're working much harder than we actually are. We think if we got up early for four days, we've earned something. You gotta drop your entitled mindset. We believe you work harder than we actually have. Trust me, most of us have it. Learn to help yourself. Don't count on other people to help you. Stay hard. The minds of medieval mother is constantly fighting against you. It's the only thing in the history of the world that shows up on time every time. It has a tactical advantage over you. It knows your fears. It knows your insecurities. It knows everything about you. It might be the only thing in that world that knows all about you.